Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. I'm Kelly Lambert with Sophie Miles Kohler, owner of Park City Nursery. Today we're talking about potting containers. And we're getting into fall season, right? That's right. We've got about eight weeks left of warm enough weather to enjoy fall blooms. And so today we wanted to come and do a little do-it-yourself potting tutorial so you guys can do this at home. And Kelly has um, selected this pot to work with. So just to kind of get your creative wheels turning, you have so many options when it comes to plant and potting. For example, my five-year-old son potted this truck last night. <laughs> And um, this is one that I snagged from the nursery. Some things to point out, to think about when you're potting besides your personal preference in style and colors is what we call thrills, fill, and spill. So when you're thinking about your pot, you wanna definitely have that attention grabber that's pretty high up in the center and you fill it in and then you want things to spill to over the side. Exactly. Who doesn't love an overflowing pot? I mean, it just makes it look fuller, I think. So let's get busy. I'm gonna have Kelly pot this pot for us today. Um, another thing to think about that you might not have tried before if you haven't done too much potting yourself, one trick of the trade is to get to the height that you want. We kind of do a little bit of cheating and we will actually put the container that your plant comes in at the bottom of the pot like that. Just throw your trash right You're in the pot. You're literally throwing the trash in the pot. And this is so you don't have to fill it up with dirt, guys. It's too much dirt, yeah. I mean, dirt will make it really heavy. These, no weight, but you're getting more space, so you use less dirt in the long run. More. Cool. And you, you were asking about picking out fall blooms. Yes. Um, well, as we transition into the colder season, there are certain flowers that are gonna do better in our colder temperatures or colder night temperatures. One of those that's pretty interesting is the ornamental cabbages and kales. And these are really cool. These can actually last until spring um, on, your, on your terrace or balcony in your container, but as the weather gets colder, the colors start to pop more. So that's where you get your the purples. The purple, yeah. The purple comes through. So this is an ornamental cabbage, this is an ornamental kale. You've got your pansies and your asters and your rutabecchia, which are just gonna be a little bit more hardy in those cold temperatures at night. Awesome. And then of course, the color changes. Mm -hmm. Our preferences change in the fall, right? Right. So do we have enough pots in the pot? Um, Should we go for some more? Yeah, I'll give you one more. Kay. I think it will be great. So because these plants aren't going in a flower bed, they're going in a pot, they don't have, we have to give them some really good soil, some really lovely soil to sit in. Um, so we brought some from the nursery that we love, Happy Frog. This is already packed with some natural um, vitamins and minerals that your plants love and need anyway out of the soil. So we're just helping them along by giving them some good stuff. So when you use this, should I put the whole bag in there? Dump it on in. Okay. Yeah. When you use this, I mean, is this fertilizer? Is this compost? I mean, how would you so this describe is this? So this soil with natural fertilizers, which include things like bat poop uh -huh. and um, caterpillar casings and lots of really fun stuff. So it should um, do really well. Yeah, it should do really well. We're giving them a really happy place to start with. Um, but that said, because we, they are just gonna be living in this little container, mm -hmm. don't hesitate to fertilize. And I brought a couple things that are just gonna to help our pots here in Park City. This is a um, water capsule. So if you are in a really hot or dry exposed spot or your pot is, if you sprinkle some of this within your soil, it's really gonna help um, release water into your soil over time. So this Got is it. a great option for park ice. I love all the soil preparations. You know, it's something that you can definitely skip, but I guarantee you it will help everything last longer. Right. If you just want to sprinkle this on top, okay. this is what we call the lazy man's fertilizer because you just <laughs> do it this one time. How much? That's perfect. Okay. And it's gonna slowly release um, those minerals, that nitrogen, phosphite, that um, our plants need and love. So after we're done prepping our soil, we're gonna go to commercial and we come back, we're gonna finish it up, actually display the flowers. What was it again? We have height. Thrills. Thrills, fills, fills and, and spills. spills. So we're gonna get to that after this commercial. It's gonna be gorgeous. You guys are all gonna wanna go fill your pots today for the fall season. We'll be right back right after this. 
Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. We had to get started without you because it just smelled too good. We wanted to start messing with them, but we, we didn't want to finish without you guys. But before we get started, or I guess before we get finished, let's talk about what we've done already. Why did we display the flowers the way we did? Yeah, so to recap, when you're putting together your pot, and depending on your pot shape, you want to think about the thriller or the centerpiece, filling around it, and then spilling over. Um, so another trick of the trade that I was just chatting with Kelly about is things don't look beautiful in a pot just because they've grown so perfectly throughout the season. You smush them in there. It's not like they're going to root down and be there for years and years. So you want them to look gorgeous off the bat. So we've been smushing our flowers in. Don't be shy. Stuff as many in as you possibly can. <laughs> is there such thing as like too full of a pot? I mean, will the plant suffer? Well, certainly. You want to be. You want the water and nutrients to be able to sift down in the soil without, um, you know, being too crammed in there. So yeah, you'll you'll kind of feel it out with your fingers, but mm -hmm. like nice and snugly next to each other without too much dirt being filled in between is the way to go. So is, are there rules about which plants to place next to each other besides aesthetics? I mean, does it, does it have to do with like water? I mean, will this get too much water, but this won't get enough? Those are definitely some things to think about. So where's your pot gonna live? Is mm -hmm. it gonna be partial shade, full shade, full sun? Um, and then how, be realistic with yourself. How often do you intend to water it? Okay. So knowing all these things, you'll pick out kind of those type of flowers or plants that like more or less water and sun and then Aesthetically, um, besides picking out what you like, you want to think about symmetry too. Okay. So you don't want a crooked, tilting, sideways pot. So you did a beautiful job here kind of placing these things. I don't know if you can see this around. on air, but we have some purple and purple, very symmetrical right mm -hmm. here. We have the same plant right here in the back. So we're kind of trying mm -hmm. to mirror each other, have right? Some balance. These two both on the sides with their middle piece right here. That's right. So mm -hmm. let's let's finish this up. Let's do it. Um, I have a question for you though. I don't know very much about plants and what, what needs, you know, certain water requirements. So are there people at the nursery to help me pick it out? Oh, for sure. Um, another little tip is to keep your blooms regenerating for mm -hmm. the next, you know, eight weeks plus, we also recommend maybe every couple weeks doing a little fertilizer that are just gonna give that caffeine to your blooms Got or your, your fruiting tree, if that was the case. So I'm going for this plant, is this okay? Yeah, that's a perfect spiller. That's okay. gonna look great. It's kind of tight, we got it. So, we have our overflow right here. Gorgeous. Would you want this to be the front? Because yeah, of these I definitely think so with the height back here and the spill here. You could tuck in a couple more along the side. Um, and these are some classic fall plants that you picked. This is an ornamental pepper. However, um, it is really spicy if, you, <laughs> if someone did happen to eat, take a bite. So don't try it. <laughs> <laughs> don't try this at home, guys. Just plant it. We've got our asters, which are gonna be really hardy. Our rutabecchia, which is in the black-eyed Susan and sunflower family. Some salvia, and of course that ornamental cabbage and kale that we talked about. Love it, wish this will get more and more purple as the season goes by. That's right. Well, I love it. This is an amazing pop. Put you two did a of great these. Job. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Put two of these in front of your front door. Everyone will compliment you when they ring the doorbell. This is Park City Nursery. You can find them at parkcitynursery.com. Thanks again for watching the Mountain Morning Show, and we'll be back right after this.